Good morning everybody. It's just coming up to nine o'clock. We were we're gonna try and be partly ready for ten o'clock, but I did say to Chris, I think it's unlikely that I will be ready you know, to actually start walking at ten o'clock. Well I don't think we know exactly what we're doing today. Um, we were or we are thinking about getting up Ben Madui, which is kind of behind me and and that way a bit so that's the that's the approximate plan but it one depends on weather two depends on time and three depends on basically my body <laughs> um so we'll we'll have a figure out what we do you know when we when we sort of talk a bit later because we were coming down the Lara Guru and we were basically trying to find somewhere to pitch from the path, looking down. And it was getting uh, darker and, and darker. We were still walking. I think we were still walking at about quarter to seven. The sun set at about six o'clock. So we were literally at the edge of twilight. So we saw this very large flat area, flattish area, as best as we could see from up on the path. And Chris said, you know, we're just going to have to go down there and we will just have to find somewhere to pitch. So we started walking for about five minutes, less than that, maybe two or three minutes, got our head torches out and then got down to the river and we were just wandering around like two lost say <laughs> two lost drunken sailors um i don't know for 10 minutes 10 odd minutes looking for somewhere you know flat to pitch down here if i'd have been by myself i might have been a little bit concerned but Maybe not. I, I'm, maybe I'm getting a bit more used to now just bundling around, not necessarily in the dark, but trying to find somewhere. But certainly being with Chris, I wasn't, um, I wasn't concerned. So anyway, we got down here and I sort of just wandered over this area and Chris wandered over that area and our paths crossed a couple of times trying to find somewhere it's all this like uh, heather stuff, boggy stuff, um, you know, rough stuff. It really wasn't very easy at all. I found one spot just over there, and I'm not sure if that's the place that Chris is using or not. Uh, but I, I said, well, there's a place there that looks, you know, reasonable. And... I was wandering around and Chris saw this space and he said, you know, did I want to use this, this spot? So I said, yes, I could, uh, I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay here. I was too knackered, literally, literally too knackered to, you know, to move anymore. My body last night was completely shot. I don't think, until I'm fitter, I don't think I want to be doing 16 kilometers again, although unfortunately to get back again, we're probably gonna have to do the same. But until things change <laughs> life-wise, I don't think I'll be doing a, a distance like that again for a while because that it literally, I, I was, I, I, I got into cab. By the time I set the trail star up, because obviously we left at 12, so we, we probably should have left a bit earlier, but we kind of weren't really rushing. Chris did say we should try and get going by 10 yesterday, and I'm a bit slow. And I knew I wasn't going to get going by 10. 
So we got going by by 12. I say, unfortunately, we took one wrong turn, which probably added on half an hour to our journey yesterday. And I'm a lot slower than I than I was. And the going was pretty good, really. We probably probably averaged, according to my watch, about two and a half kilometers an hour, which is really quite slow, really, because it's. I mean, it was uphill, but I mean, none of it was like steep. It wasn't like vertical uphill. But anyway, we got going and then, as I say, we got up here and by the time I got into camp, I think it was, when I, fa when I found this spot, it was probably about half past seven, at least. And then I put the trail stair up. My original plan was to put the trail stair in the same place but it was asleep lengthwise. Well, then when I looked more closely, this patch here looked marginally flatter at the back. So what I did, because there's so much grass and, and heather, I put one of my foam mats under the ground sheet. So I've got a cube of fiber ground sheet. So I do like to baby it a little bit. Um, but, I mean, I'd be using this ground sheet with the trail star uh, for several years now, and it's still still going strong. But on this type of terrain, I did want to uh, just protect it a bit. So I put one of my foam mats underneath it. So I put one foam mat underneath it, and then I've got another foam mat here with various bits and bobs on. I'm just putting some power into my Petzl head torch, just in case, just in case we're fumbling around in the dark, but I don't think we will be tonight. And that's famous last words. We were pitching in the dark. It was a long day. Keep watching. Well, I basically got into camp. I got the trail style, I put the inner out. My whole body was just aching. My shoulders were aching. I got a very, I got a weak right shoulder. My, my left shoulder was hurting last night, but but the right one was was hurting the most. I find it from the seat belt in the car. It kind of pulls on on the shoulder, and it does make that shoulder quite tender. So my whole body was, you know, I've, I've set you up there and I need water now. It's clever, isn't it? Let's put you there. So I set up, um, yeah, so my whole, every, everything was aching. My head, I had the headache of, the mother of all headaches, quite literally. My head was really, really aching, and I had so little energy or power to do anything. I, I didn't even, I didn't cook last night. I had, I had cheese and crackers. I just didn't have the, the energy or the will to eat, you know, as in cook something. I had cheese and crackers and several and several of my biscuit things. And that helps, so I'm gonna have some porridge in a minute. And I think I watched a little bit more of the old man between about eight and 9.30. And at 9.30, my head was just spinning so much. I thought, I gotta put my head, I gotta put my head down. So I put my head down at 9.30 and the next thing I knew it was about quarter past, quarter past 11, half past 11, something like that. So I must have been out for a couple of hours and I, I came to and I was quite warm. So I started thinking about taking this shirt off. I didn't take it off straight away. I got my first aid kit out and I took a couple of headache tablets and painkillers. I took some, a couple of ibuprofen for my, for my joints. 
<laughs> um, and I could feel them kicking in, certainly the, the painkillers for the head. I could feel them kicking in after about half an hour or something like that. The headache just started to ease off, you know, a little bit. And then I think I closed my eyes. Half past, I think it was about half past, about half past 12, I think. It was, I think it was before one, but I just stay awake for a few minutes, just, just relaxing and chilling out and just trying to get my, <laughs> trying to get my, my body back under control because that was one, one hell of a walk. A few years ago, I would have done that very easily, wouldn't have battered an eyelid at a walk like that, 15 kilometers, I mean, it's not, it's not a million miles, but I unfortunately don't get any sleep at home, for almost virtually no sleep at home, unfortunately. I kind of come out here to camp to get sleep sometimes, you know, often. Anyway, um, that's my life, I've got to sort that out. Um, so anyway, we've yeah, I fell asleep and then the next thing I knew it was half past eight this morning. So it's now nine o'clock, just gone nine, so I better slowly start to sort things out. So I'm kind of on, when I'm doing obviously a walk myself, then obviously I'm kind of like in charge of where we're going. When you're walking with Chris, you kind of, Okay, you're the expert. This is your back, literally your backyard out here. So I, I keep a, a quarter of an eye on the map and the phone out here. But like I said, this is like his back garden out here. So I know where we are. So in an emergency, I could, I could get back easily enough. Chris is nearly packed up over there. I'm nearly packed up here. It shows I'm not concentrating because I hadn't turned the microphone on or the GoPro. This is where we camped last night. Uh, Chris obviously had to go over there. Um, you know, we were fumbling around in this long tussocky grass um, for a good 20 minutes last night. The path is somewhere <coughs> up there. We had to walk quite a little way down here. So we're going to head in that direction. Um, anyway, I stupidly forgot to turn the microphone and press record. So I'm just going to get this bit here put away, which won't take too long. And then we're going to get going. You can see that Lassie is, uh, <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Lassie's been playing in the water all night. I think she slept quite a bit. But I think this morning she's been splashing pretty much on and off. Note to self, <laughs> concentrate. Hit that record. Okay, catch up later. Okay, well, we're just making our way up through this heather field at the moment. I think we went down just over that way. It was a little bit easier going down. And we were camped somewhere down by the river down there. You can see the clouds are intermittent up on the tops. So I'm just gonna make my way <laughs> through this heather field here. I don't let Chris go too far ahead. <laughs> It's almost like an antelope on this stuff. Okay, well, I'm using the GoPro 10 here. And we're gonna, depending on time, try and get up to Ben McDewey, which is to the right. We're going to take the 
left hand ridge up. Now I did attach the DJI microphone for external recording and it won't turn on so I can only use the mic in the GoPro that's how it seems to go technology so anyway we're making our way up here it's quite rough and rocky I think I might go up this way my little legs <laughs> certainly won't be doing anything this strenuous for a long time this is happy to do it this once but again for a while the ridge we're aiming for there's that one there and then if we do Ben McDewey you kind of go around but it's a whole load of heather and grass and bracken I'm gonna have to just swing over to the left I think now <laughs> oh. I think down there, isn't it? Yes. Oh, nice So that's the ridge we want up there, is that right? Oh, we can see some of the top, but it's not 
it certainly isn't the top of the top because we're only on 800 meters at the moment which interestingly was the height of the pass Turn around so you can see down below. So that's the that's the view there. And you can see the path just down there. And I'm gonna carry on up this steep slope and still we go up 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 and up we're starting to come into the mist a little bit now And you can see it's a long, a long way up. We're at uh, 873 meters, and I think this goes to about 1,200 odd by the time you get to the top. So <laughs> it's still got about 300 odd meters to go it's a long way um, it's steep but it's not it's not too steep <laughs> it's steep enough though I'm kind of literally taking just a few steps at a time and then have like a a second between every few steps I know Chris is used to this but he's uh I'm not going to say how old he is, I don't think that's fair. I'm only 52 and he's got a good 20 years on me. <laughs> so that's not saying how old he is, is it? So in a way it's it's good that the, the young one is at least keeping pace <laughs> with the old fat. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, and it's looking like it's getting a bit steeper here too. It had started to rain, but at least the rain has not gone come to anything. Right, so uh, we started off down by the water and we're about halfway up this ridge here. So it looks like it gets steeper there and then eases off, but it's going to go all the way up that contour line there is 1100 so that's 1150 and Ben McDewey is 13 but of real heavy going it looks like 
1100 and then you're still going up but it does ease off a little bit at 1100 okay well all that heather has given way to rocks and stones now and we're still going up we're on 900 meters now so if this really yeah if this really steep stuff distance is maybe 200 meters so we're almost going 200 meters up and 200 meters distance so I suppose it's not far off 45 degrees is it Always remember Indiana Jones when he says, Oh, rats. It's sometimes how I feel about stones. Always keep an eye on where Chris is going because he's usually found. Oh, yes! Yeah! If it just moves over to where the sun is, then the sun will be shining on the righteous. to look up too much just concentrate on where your feet are going and just know that with every footstep you are getting high up we're at 950 so we've still got back up there about 150 meters to go up to about 1100 and then it just eases off a little good job we <laughs> good job we left at about 11 the pit zips aren't very easy to do up on this No. Yeah. I haven't did these if I get lower down. Yes. The wind is whistling through them now. Yeah. But yeah, they are they are awkward to find and do up. Yes. I think I've done the map a a bit. Yeah, there could be something up there, couldn't there? Yeah. There might be a bit of a path. We're going that way anyway. Yeah. Than I hoped, but it's blue sky. True. I'm coming your direction a bit, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to I think so. It looks like it's quite slippery. Lassie is, uh, yeah, Lassie is struggling on it. Yeah.
this is a very very steep bit here Deep there. Right, it's coming up to two o'clock, so we've been going nearly three hours, more like two and a half, and we've not even done. And we've not even done three kilometers yet. Average speed 1.1. That's because we've been coming up this steep bugger of a slope. Pretty nice shot of that mountain over there. kind of above the cloud even here at the moment we're debating whether we're going to go to Ben McDewey or not I'm vetoing it and saying I think we need to take a left hand turn on the path up here because we've got to get to a boulder field and cross that and it's at least seven kilometers to the boulder field and then we've got to find camp the other side of it so I think most likely we'll just wave at Ben McDewey over there I don't want to be crossing that boulder field in the dark Chris needs to get going tomorrow morning and I got very little chance of getting going at 8 in the morning and I don't want to cross the boulder field by myself so we'll kind of see how it goes I think it's a pretty tired though as well We're doing okay on time as Chris said if we left at 10 we might make the path at 2 and we left at 11 and we're likely to get to the path 2 ish maybe just after Les has found plenty of water Dream here. I suppose there's not a huge amount of energy left in my legs. I think so. As we're not going up I don't I don't I don't think we're gonna have time, Chris. I I just think it's too 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 risky to take up time. I mean from where we get to the plateau to McDewey and back again. 
you know, you're looking at, hole, yeah. It's bouldered most of the way. Right. So, I mean, the summit is just a boulder field. Right, yeah. Okay, well, we just stopped for uh, a nibble to eat. <laughs> just uh, talking to myself. We just stopped for a nibble to eat. And I flew the drone. Good job I did. It was just visible, you know, enough visibility. You may have just seen Ben McDewey, which is over in the mist, over there. The little... Lochan that we flew over is the highest body of water in the United in the United Kingdom. Highest named body of water. Highest named body of water. So if there's a puddle or something like that that's not named, then there might be a puddle higher. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently, yes. Very nice path along here. I don't think we're going to be so lucky as to as to be on it for very long because we're going to take a, a left hand turn at some point. But I don't think I don't think just yet. So I think we can enjoy this really nice path literally higher than we're literally higher than the cloud well okay some of the cloud and we're almost as high as the sun here <laughs> i guess if you're on a high enough mountain you're actually going to be higher than the sun but yeah this is a uh, wish all the paths were like this <laughs> We'd be doing all right, wouldn't we? Very nice, easy path. So we didn't do Ben McDewey. There just, there wouldn't have been time. And we didn't get into camp, as I said. If you watched yesterday's video, we didn't get into camp until after dark. We were using head torches and God knows what to, uh, try and find a pitch last night so I didn't settle down until about half past seven well it was near at eight to be honest and I really was I was just shattered and exhausted yesterday I had a thumping headache I didn't bother taking any painkillers at first and I felt so tired, I thought, well, if I put my head down and go to sleep, which I did at half past nine, I was kind of hoping that the head would, <laughs> I was hoping my head would go away. But then I woke up at about quarter past 11. So nearly to, after two hours sleep and my head was still throbbing. So at that point, I took some... Uh, a good dose of cocodamore. I also took some ibuprofen because uh, my ow, my legs were pretty sore on my knees, so I took a couple of ibuprofen, 200 as well. Because you can mix those, and then I had a. Uh, Good night's sleep. Okay, well we're starting to go down and the mist as you can see is mostly to our left. There's a few more rocks and things like that now that I need to keep half an eye on. So I think I'm gonna 
concentrate on walking. I'll just give you a quick view. Well, we're, we're heading down here. It's not too steep. It looks steepish on the map, but it's, and it looked quite steep from the top, but it's, it's not too bad. I'm just taking it uh, very steadily. I'm, I think I'm a lot slower going down than I am coming up, to be honest. But we're heading for Lurcher's Crag. <laughs> That thing looks like something in the hand of the Baskervilles. Lurcher's Crag. Sounds about right, doesn't it? We'll be lurching all over it, I think. But that's what we're, we're heading for. So we've got to go down here, across, up Lurcher's Crag. And then, God help us, there's a pretty steep... I don't think it's too long. I think it's longer than this but it's a very steep descent the other side. The only good thing is hopefully not too far the other side, we'll find somewhere ooh, to camp. And then I'm, I can chill out tomorrow then. Chris probably will have to get going first thing in the morning. But from there, I'll be able to pick up the path and head back. Probably what I'll do tomorrow night. I won't be too late getting going. Hopefully, says he. It is tomorrow night. So I'll try and find, it shouldn't be that difficult, where we camp the first night. That's kind of my... That's kind of my plan for tomorrow night and then that's really quite close to the car then for heading for heading back on Sunday and then I'll do the journey in two goes I'll try and get down to Stafford Sunday stop over at Stafford services and then it's not too far from there. We'll kind of see how it, see how it goes. But you can see Lurcher's crack. <laughs> Jesus. Look at that. Oh, God. Messner, you need to get, you need to get, you need to get yourself up Lurcher's crag. Look at that. Oh, God. It's got to drag you over this one. Oh God, what we do for, <laughs> what we do for bloody YouTube. Mind you, we'll be doing it if we weren't doing YouTube, but, oh God. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and concentrate on walking because Chris has got a bit ahead of me. I'm particularly looking forward to this one, especially as the other side is even steeper. Okay, well, we've been coming down these boulders and now we've got to somehow work our way through this. Chris has made his way down 
that way. They don't like boulders. Come on, let's see. Put a handhold there. That's pretty solid there. Oh, let's see. Holy. Ooh. To say that I'm not a little bit scared would be an understatement. I'm just literally taking one at a time and we're kind of the problem is we're not really going down we're more going across Got to try and we've done we've done a bit of a ziggy 
a zig. We've done the zig. Now, now we've got to do the zag. Can see, can see the end of it there. It's literally see the edge there. I don't think it's going to topple too much. <sighs> Somehow I got it. I've done another zig. Somehow I've got to do another zag over there. <sighs> That's what we've just. <laughs> That's what I've just come down. Five o'clock. And you've got to be really careful here that your feet don't disappear. Into stones but at least not quite so many At least once, hopefully, once we're through those boulders. Hopefully, it's an easier path down. At least we've still got an hour of daylight. Then get dark until well, sunset is six.
and when you come to the last turn, <laughs> for God's sake, be careful of all this moss. You don't stick your feet. In a hole. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I think it's getting a bit easier. As my legs are getting more and more tired now. We've done nine kilometers, which is less than the 16 odd that we did yesterday. And the time is quarter past five. So pretty sure that we will get down the bottom before six. Whether we're looking for camp <laughs> before dark again, I don't know. But from down there, even if Chris ooh, has to get going, earlier in the morning I can sleep in because we're very very close to the main path here oh Jesus oh, I'm getting a bit tired of boulders <laughs> my legs they're just oh, tired and I must admit even though the shoes are clearly very grippy. The grip of the shoes and the grip of the poles is, I have to say, <laughs> more grippy than, than my bottle. <laughs> oh. I think we're coming to some more stony stuff here, so this might be a bit easier to walk on. You'd actually think that this stuff was easy, but it's uh, very, very slow going for me because I don't know. There's so many stones around. I'm trying to avoid as many stones as possible and I'm very careful with my footing in fact if we go down that way we're going to miss most of those stones over there but it's all those stones up there I had to kind of work through and around I think if I go over here and a bit of a zig, a famous Tony zig, and then we can kind of go right where Lassie is, and that will be the zag. Okay, well, the battery is getting quite low on this GoPro, so I'm gonna turn off again. I was certainly kind of hoping that this would be a little bit easier to get down but I'm finding this very slow going it's what we've come down through there if it was just grass I it would be fine because it's heather 
and stones I'm trying to make sure that I don't trip or slip or put my foot in a hole or anything like that so I'm going very slowly because I didn't want to stick my foot in any holes or ruts or anything like that better to go slowly and take your time than take any chances and injure yourself right well it's around about here that uh, the battery was starting to struggle on this GoPro Hero 10 and time was really ticking by as well it took us took me <laughs> a very long time to get through the, all of these rocks and everything and we didn't get down to the path until about six o'clock we then spent about 15 uh, minutes or so looking at the top where that pool is on the left hand side trying to find somewhere there was nothing there so we ended up going, uh, you know, right down to the path and the other side of the path camping there. And please, as usual, return for the next part. A big thank you to Chris for his company on this trip. And I hope we can do more in the future. Today we walked a bit more. Oh, bloody hell, more wind.